no beta uh, collision. See, these kind of questions will be asked frequently because uh, when you approach any of this kind of questions, um, sorry, when you approach any this kind of patients, uh, how do you properly manage this particular patient? It's really important. Okay, and uh, again, to assess the safety, uh, in terms of the safety, uh, number of questions will be asked. So the client's injury include two fractured rib and contusions. Which of the following are expected neurological changes for the patient with a concussion? Okay, what is concussion? Concussion is what we learned like a hop injury and counter hop injury is indicating concussion. Okay, so when a patient's head get hit over a, a still object, or your head is like a still and moving object uh, just moved and just had a hit over your head. Fine. So both can cause concussion. So what signs will be expected as a result of concussion? That is the question here. Yes, please uh, select the answer. So, in case of head injury, what signs will be expected? Okay, mirror selected two, three, five. Perfect. Asymmetrical pupillary constriction is not expected. And Loss of vision is also not expected. Yeah, so the answer is two, three, and five. What is the answer? Second one, brief period of confusion. There will be headache and there will be retrograde amnesia. Okay. In case of head injury, the patient might get retrograde uh, amnesia. It's not a permanent thing. Once the concussion or the problem is uh, resolved, it can be reverted back. Okay. Okay, please. Please write down the sign of concussion. Two, three, five. Next question. Read this. 82-year-old client has Parkinson's disorder. During assessment, the nurse would expect which of the following action to produce the most tremor activity of the hand. Okay, so here the question says, which of the following action in case of Parkinson's disease? Now, let me just revise. What is Parkinson's disease? It's a neurological neuromuscular disease. Okay, and what happens uh, because of this? What is what is what is the exit reason for this Parkinson disease? It's due to deficiency of yes dopamine. Dopamine, yeah. Deficiency of dopamine can cause trauma. Uh, Parkinson's disease. Only remember the pathophysiology. Only this dopamine. I hope everyone have heard about this dopamine. It's a neurotransmitter. It's a chemical neurotransmitter. And now you may think, what is neurotransmitter? Neurotransmitters are chemical comp components or it's biological also. And these neurotransmitters are acting on the synapse network and which is helping uh, the impulses to move. Okay. I can give very good example. Now you imagine we all we all are standing or we all are at a classroom, not online, offline. Okay. Just imagine we all are sitting in a classroom. Okay. So this is the classroom here. Okay. And now 
emergency, we want a wash basin to set in the classroom, inside the classroom. We had a wash basin outside, but we want a, a basin inside the classroom. Okay, yeah. So for this, we want certain material, wash basin, paper, the some kind, some bricks and cupboard and everything. Okay, and our classroom is on the second floor, and we want this to be happen very fast. Okay, it's for the safety purpose, and I ordered everything, and that is on the ground floor. So we got all material, raw material at ground floor. Okay, and there is, there is only hard, hard, very little materials. Uh, one uh, glass top and one uh, 10 bricks. Very smaller amount. Okay, so, and I request all of you to just bring those things. How would you help me? That is my question. Okay, so we are at the second floor. All material at the ground floor. And I have almost... Uh, 25 students in my class. Okay, so I can request all of you to spend 15 minutes and then please bring all those things in the upstairs. Okay, so you all are clever and what you did is, this is staircase. Okay, one is standing here, another is standing here in the other stair step. The other is standing in the other step. The other one is standing and one is standing here. Okay. And from this, from the ground, one brick, he took one brick and then it's handed over to the next who is standing very close and handed over to next very oh, who are standing. Other thing going to transfer the transfer the boy. Okay. Those who are standing in the uh, ground floor who took that object and just hand it over to the very next person who is standing close. And that person is not mobilizing the position, just only shifting that object through the hand to the another point, another person. Okay, it's like a passing the thing. Have you have you heard like have you played passing ball? It's a game. So the same way we can pass the or every object which is there in the ground floor. And within 15 minutes or maximum half an hour, it, everything will reach in the classroom. So I am happy. I can order one lime juice for everyone. Yeah, I hope you all are happy. Okay, this is how neurotransmission take place. Now you imagine the raw material which was found in the ground floor is a impulses. Imagine. All raw material is impulses. Okay. Whoever is standing in the stairs, that means all nurses, my students. Okay. You all are not moving. You are standing still. Fine. You are all are neurons. Okay. The raw material which is found in the ground floor is impulses. And you all are standing still. That is neurons. And it reaches where? It reaches at the classroom. Because our ultimate motto, ultimate goal is reaching the impulses at the required space. Okay. And which was controlled by whom? I just want that motto. And I just wanted that material to be reached at the road. So the control system did by me. So it... Myself is here acted as a controlling system, as a brain. Okay. So I acted here as a brain. Raw material acted here as an impulses. You people standing on the stair is acted as a neurons where you are not moving yourself. I am also not moving. I am sitting in the chair in the classroom itself. Okay. And the raw material is moving not by themselves. It is with the control of the neurons, okay? This is how neurotransmission take place, okay? And there are neurotransmitters. And what the neurotransmitter do is, neurotransmitter helps. Neurotransmitter helps each of you to transfer this. That means your energy is neurotransmitter. Without a neurotransmitter, you can't move. 
always neurotransmitter is acting on the neurons and that is basically in between two neurons just imagine this is one neuron dendrite and this is the another neuron dendrite i can just give an example one more example it's like a one your hand okay this is one of your hand who is standing in the in one side and this is another one's hand okay so only the impulses are moving the brick is moving from this to here you are not touching your hand okay and for transferring this neurotransmitters are helping where is neurotransmitters found neurotransmitters found in between two neurons clear so dopamine is also considered as a neurotransmitter which is normally helping just a minute Okay, so neuro, uh, dopamine is a neurotransmitter and acting on the neurons to move the muscles. It's basically controlling the coordinatory function. Dopamine is helping for coordinatory function. What is coordination? Coordination, which means two or more muscles are working together to get a goal. What is coordination? We are coordinating particular thing for an event, which means three or more or two or more actions are doing or combining together to meet a particular goal. So what is coordinatory function? Two or more muscles working together to get an action. For example, if you want to smile, just try smiling. Just look at the screen and smile, everyone. When you smile, both sides of your face muscles are working together to form a particular goal. What is your goal? You have, you need to smile. So when you wanted to smile, when you wanted to cry, when you want to make any of facial expression, two sides, the paired muscles has to work together. As for the studies, usually says, you know, I'm, if I'm not forgotten, it's like um, almost 33 pairs of muscles are required uh, to make an expression. Okay, uh, 33 um, um, uh, like, uh, small muscles are required to make an expression. Fine. So, fine. So, eating food. Just try, try uh, the action of eating food. See, whenever you just get a get particular this kind of statement like eating food, we don't eat with a hand. Definitely, have, we use hand, but by spoon and fork. Okay, we we never use the hand for eating, like how we eat. Okay, so <clears throat> we normally use spoon and fork. So by using spoon and fork, how do we eat? Both has hand hands the both sided hand has to be coordinated together. Fine. Right? So, these kind of coordinatory action is controlled by dopamine. Clear? So, in case of uh, Parkinson's disease, what happened? The coordinatory function is not appropriate. Look at this masked face. Okay. So, when you wear mask, expressions are not visible outside. So, in this particular patient, there, is, there will not be no expressions. Why? Expression require coordinatory function. Okay, forward tilting of trunk. Trunk is tilted forward. It's also deficiency of this. Okay, Rem reduced arm swing. The arm is always like a slightly flexed. Stooped posture. Again, coordinatory function. The chest as well as the back muscles are not coordinating together. Even the leg muscles are not coordinating together. That is the reason why patient get tremors. Okay. So the question is, which <clears throat> the nurse would expect which of the following action to produce the most tremor activity? So the key point here is what is the sign of Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease, basically the sign of Parkinson's disease is a tremors. It's a rusting tremors. So at which time the tremors is at, uh, found high? or tremors are exhibited 
increased or increased tremor is ex uh, expected at which which uh, action? Eating with a fork or resting hand, uh, standing with the hand loose at side, rolling of small pill between the finger. Yes. Yes, Mira, what is the answer? Yes. Second one. Second one. Okay, perfect. Mira, you don't feel uh, good? Yes, yes. I was just, yeah. What happened? Fever. Yeah. Mm. Take care, my dear. Only there is uh, one week more. Hardly one week. Okay. Have you taken medicine? Yeah. Okay. Get well soon and take a rest. Okay. So the answer for this is resting tremors. So now remember, Parkinson is a disease in which dopamine is a deficit. Dopamine is acting on a muscles in order to coordinate the function. So all coordinatory functions impaired, walking impaired, eating impaired, there will be tremors, there will, be, there will not be any uh, expression on the face. Okay, the patient may get fall, uh, joints will be flexed, the hand will be flexed, the patient is not able to keep the hand straight. Okay, and patient is uh, unable to uh, do any of coordinatory functions like buttoning of dress, Buttoning of dress require both hands. Without uh, uh, using two hands, we can't. Okay. So buttoning of dress is required two hands. So when the patient is not able to do that. And tying a lace on the shoe, that is again difficult for this particular patient. And remember, uh, its basic sign is resting tremors. When the patient is not doing activity, tremors will be more or it is exhibited more. Fine. Right? And it can be treated with uh, giving dopamine. Okay, dopamine injections, actually, I'm sorry. Dopamine tablets can be given at divided doses, okay? So Parkinson's disease, there will be chances to get a fall. Injury is a major problem here. Resting traumas, it can be treated by giving levodopa. And always remember when uh, you get an order of levodopa, it has to be given uh, divided. That means... If patient requires 20 mg per day, the 20 mg has to be uh, equally divided into equal uh, part. Okay, And basically, the patient requires uh, levodopa in the morning than night. Because night, we are just a simply patient is sleeping. Patient doesn't require any activities during the night. But uh, if you give this medicines in the morning, that will be better. Fine. Even before exercise, before eating food so that at least uh, the patient can eat food properly. Okay. And again, swallowing will be an, another problem with this particular patient, okay? Next, listen to the question. Uh, nurse and unlicensed assistive personnel are caring for a client who has an impaired cranial nerve number eight. Which of the following direction would be appropriate for the nurse to provide for UAP? So you have to check cranial number eight. It is on the uh, screen. Okay, this is not normally you get the get for exam. I have just added this picture to this. What are the cranial nerves? There are 12 cranial nerves, olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlea, trigeminal, abdesin, facial, acoustic, or vestibular cochlear. Eighth nerve is otherwise considered as a vestibular cochlear and glossal pharyngeal, vagus, accessory, hypoglossal. See, uh, by hurting the entire names, for me, it is difficult. Okay, I don't have the ability to by heart it something. I only understand the thing. I, even I, I don't know even a single definition of any of this is. Literally, I don't know. Because I don't have that capacity. So those who are able to by heart it, you can. Those who are struggling like me, you can just learn this particular picture. When you are just uh, simply watching TV or simply sitting, you can just draw this picture. Okay? If you just lo learn this picture, then you can learn the cranial now as well as the function. Okay? I don't want everyone to by heart everything. But um, vagus nerve is important. 
vagus nerve is important. Vestibular cochlear or acoustic nerve is important. Facial nerve is important. And yeah, fifth one. Trigeminal entirely the seven, twelve nerves are important. And fifth is okay. At least if you learn, no, I can't skip first three. Okay. At least these nerves and name and function it is important. So eighth nerve is acoustic nerve or vestibular cochlear nerve. So regarding that, what options relating to that? Read the option. Option one says be aware of the like shoulder weakness. Shoulder weakness, it's a shoulder shrunk. It is controlled by 11th nerve. Accessory nerve. See, look at the picture and where is 11 knotted? 11 is at the shoulder area. It's considered, it is responsible for shoulder shrunk. Okay. Second one says, describe the enrollment of the client when assisting with an ambulation. It's like uh, identifying the patient's uh, orientation. So that is not related with this. Ensure that the client sit upright and tuck the chin when swallowing food. It's like a glossopharyngeal nerve, twice as a glossopharyngeal nerve. And fourth one is limit background noises as much as possible when speaking with the client. It is uh, uh, to assess the like hearing. Hearing is responsible by, look at the eighth nerve and where is eighth number is uh, located? Eighth number is located at the ear. So it is vestibular cochlear nerve. It is controlling the temporal lobe function. Fine. So the answer for this is vestibular cochlear nerve is helping for hearing. What is the other name of vestibular cochlear nerve? That is acoustic nerve. Okay. Eighth nerve is vestibular cochlear nerve. No, it's an auditory nerve. Where is where is that located? It is at the temporal lobe. Okay. So the answer for this is fourth one. Next. 45 year old woman present to the emergency department with her mother. She complains of headache in the morning and forceful vomiting. Projectile vomiting. Projectile vomiting already we learned. It is indicating increased ICP. She reports that she feels of balance lately when walking. So that means she has a gait imbalance. The symptoms have developed slowly but are increasing worsening. So initially the symptoms started very slow but now it is increasing. Ophthalmoscopic examination. That is on the eye examination of the fundi shows bilateral venous engorgement that means inside the ear sorry inside the eye the blood vessel it is engorged or bulged the mother says her daughter does not seem herself so the mother is complaining that my child has some problem or she is not seem herself she has become messy in the home uses absence language and does not seem to care about anything. That means she is not uh, behaving properly. She is using uh, unwanted language or obscene language. And uh, she is not keeping the area clean and tidy. Which clinical finding should the nurse observe for the most carefully? So what is the problem of the patient? Balance is for, uh, changing. And uh, patient has projectile vomiting, patient has uh, yeah, forceful vomiting and a, a vision like a bilateral venous engorgement. It's something related with the eye problem. Okay, so which of the following you will observe? Decreased muscle strong and strength, delayed pupillary response, decreased alert and orientation, headache in the afternoon hours. Headache in the afternoon hours not mentioned in the question. So I think I can remove fourth one. See, I have to select the answer based on the situation, right? So I just remove fourth one. Okay. Muscle tone and strength. Yes, the patient has gait imbalance. So what is the major problem currently the patient is experiencing? I feel that the 
uh, ophthalmoscopic examination finding. Okay, so the patient may not be uh, uh, having a proper vision. Okay, vision might be slightly changing. That could be one of the reasons why she is not keeping everything tidy because she is not uh, having that proper vision. So that can be one of the reasons why she is keeping the home messy. I don't know, but it can be. Fine. Decreasing alertness and orientation. Again, in the question regarding orientation, it is not uh, specifically mentioned. Okay. Oh, but all these four are important. So most carefully which sign you will observe. So now the patient has a vision changes or a bilateral venous engorgement. So go for answer second. It's delayed pupillary response. Fine. Next, nurses working in the medical unit has been assigned to care for a 65-year-old patient with a CVA, cerebrovascular accident, which caused a right side hemiparesis. What is CVA, cerebrovascular accident? Just uh, split this cerebrovascular accident. Cerebro, it is this a cerebrum. Okay, this is cerebrum in the picture. This is cerebrum. And vascular is related with a blood vessel accident. Okay, so basically cerebrum can be divided into two hemispheres. It has two hemispheres, one hemisphere and two hemispheres. Okay, right hemisphere is controlling left motor function and left hemisphere is controlling right motor function. Cerebrum is getting blood supply uh, with the cerebral arteries. Okay, so what is cerebrovascular accident? The vascular changes or the blood supply which is uh, provided to the brain which get obstructed sometime or it, it, the blood, blood uh, uh, vessel get ruptured. Okay, in these situations usually what happens um, ischemic changes to the brain may happen. So it can cause brain ischemia. When oxygenated blood supply not reaching into the cerebral cells, the cerebral cell will start dying. Okay. So the inflammatory changes of cerebrum is considered as a CVA. Okay. And the patient had CVA and caused a right-sided hemisphere paresis. Okay. Hemiparesis. It's weakness in the right side. So the weakness in the right side is it can be because of a uh, damage to the left brain. Left hemisphere damage can cause right-sided hemiparesis. I repeat, left brain damage. Left brain damage can cause right hemisphere. Okay. So, the nurse is worried about the patient developing contracture due to immobility. So, definitely the patient is not mobilizing properly. So, immobility can cause contracture. What is contracture? Stiffness of the muscles is because of immobility. Which of the following nursing action is most important to be implemented? So in order to prevent the contracture, what is uh, your action to implement? Contracture is only because of any mobility. So it can be uh, controlled by uh, initiating activity. Where is activity in this? That is provide a range of motion exercise. So the answer for this is third one. Okay. Next, the client is diagnosed with a right-sided 